there's a lot of talk going on politically about the definition of racism and a lot of other terms being associated with racism. Often you'll hear about systemic racism, anti-racism, uh, anti or reverse racism, and a new definition of racism or a criticism of the definition uh, because people think it's not exactly correct. Uh, people will say that racism requires power and privilege. And I think there's a lot of confusion going on as to both the understanding of the original definition, the term racism, and why people are arguing for change and how that connects to the original definition. Because usually when you hear this, you don't hear them talk about what's wrong with the original definition or how exactly it needs to be changed. They're just adding other things to it. So I want to clear that up because it's not that complicated. So you first have to understand the original definition. And it's pretty much consistent if you search for it online and look for the definition in Merriam-Webster's dictionary online or the variety of other ones. It's essentially going to be when you define somebody's character by their race. So you're attaching a moral evaluation of their character depending on what their race is. And that's called racism. So it's often put in a negative way. You're applying a negative connotation to someone's character because of their race, but that would also include any positive connotation. If somebody is inferior because of their race, that would imply then that somebody is superior compared to that. So across the board, that's what it means. And you can connect the same kind of thinking with words that uh, you also hear a lot of, such as sexism. And just to compare the two, if you're defining someone's character, if you're applying a moral evaluation of their character, which includes their sex, male or female, as positive or negative, that's called sexism. And the reason that racism and sexism, but we're going to talk about racism, the reason that the definition is being used, if you, somebody calls you racist, it's a negative thing. It's not a positive. It's not uh, simply descriptive without any sort of moral uh, connotation, such as describing someone who is a certain height that doesn't make you good or bad. Um, but if somebody did, you might call it heightism. If you implied that um, somebody who is above a certain height was good, somebody below that was bad, so you'd have superior height people, that would be along the same lines. So racism is identifying an idea that people hold and have held for a long time that somebody or a, a group of people are morally inferior or superior dependent upon the color of their skin. And it's wrong it, it, when you call someone a racist it has that negative connotation because it's wrong. It's a false idea. It's not true. And it's not true because moral evaluations of someone's character requires choice. So connecting an evaluation of their character to something that they have no choice over is a bad connection. You can't do that. You can't say someone's character is an evaluation of all their choices, but also an evaluation of something they have no choice over. And so, for example, if you're in a supermarket and you see a guy grab a gallon of milk 
and he throws it on the ground and it explodes, you're probably not going to have a good opinion, a positive opinion of that person's character. But if somebody, uh, if uh, the mother quickly comes up and apologizes and uh, notes that he has a mental deficiency, then your perception of him as a person is going to change if he's uh, mentally retarded. Because that mental deficiency is a matter of it's pointing to the fact that they don't have their complete mental faculty. They are lacking in their ability to reason and their ability to make rational choices. And so you're not going to think that they're a bad person. There's something else wrong. If, as another example, somebody gets in a car crash and the reason for that crash is because they were drinking and then they decided to start driving, you're not going to think they made a good choice. They made a bad choice. It's not a positive appraisal of their character. But if they crash because of something that they didn't choose, if, for example, they have a heart attack and it's completely unexpected, it's not their fault, then the crash can still be bad. It's still not something that you're going to say is good, but the reason for the crash is something that is outside their control. So it has a different uh, um, moral judgment associated with it. Also, in the court system, there is uh, a defense, which is uh, a plea for insanity. So if somebody um, is determined to be um, you know, certifiably insane, that is pointing to the fact that they don't have the full capacity to make choices. So you would judge them differently in how you apply um, a proper judgment to it. So you can't connect a value of choice and non-choice. And it's not that other things don't have value. That would be a, another mistake. It's not that anything else that doesn't uh, revolve around choice has no value. For example, if you are hiring for a movie and the role in which you need to fill in the script, it's specifically for a person who is an older black female, they need to play a role of a grandmother, then you have to, to fill that role properly, you would have to then apply a value to someone who is older, uh, female, and is black. And that's not a value that you connect to their character. So if a young uh, white boy tries to audition for that position, you're not going to accept them. Even if they could play the role well, they're not going to fill the role properly visually. Does that make the uh, young boy a bad person? No. Does that mean that uh, older uh, black females are good people for being older and female and black? No. That's not something you can connect to their character but it still has a value within that context. So you can't properly connect that, whether it's, like I said, their sex, their age, and all sorts of other things. So racism is an attempt to attach a moral evaluation of the person's character to something that is superficial. It's irrelevant to their character. And that's why it has a negative connotation. When you call someone a racist, you're saying that they're making a bad judgment, a very bad judgment. And so there's an argument or um, a new definition being thrown around. People will say, they might say black people can't be racist. They may not say that, but they will add power and privilege. And the reason that they're adding power and privilege, well, I need to back up real quick. 
you have to note that power and privilege, they're not using those words in the way that you would think power and privilege would be used. Because, for example, Oprah Winfrey is extremely powerful and privileged. She's a billionaire last time I checked. LeBron James has power and privilege. Barack Obama has power and privilege, or certainly had more when he was the president. So no, nobody's going to call them racist, at least not publicly, and certainly nobody on the side of uh, BLM, for example, or in the mainstream media are going to call them racist but they certainly have power and privilege. And so sometimes you'll also hear black people can't be racist. So the power and privilege that is being attached to the definition of racism, they're not trying to necessarily ch um, change the defini uh, definition of racism, and there's a reason for that, but they're tacking on power and privilege as a way to exclude all black people and include all white people. It's a power and privilege of a race. And you can challenge them on this, but you'll get to this point. So the reason that they want to include that power and privilege, but not alter the original definition or have very, they have very little to say about the original definition is because it is very important. It is critical to the negative connotation of the word racism when you accuse somebody of being a racist. If you say it as a descriptive uh, word, it has no moral um, you know, sting to it. You can't say that you're a racist and then somebody says, oh, please, no, don't call me a racist, anything but that. They'll try to uh, plead that they're, you know, guilty and they want to, uh, you know, ask, beg for forgiveness. Even if they didn't do anything racist, it's just assumed that they are because they're white. So they don't want to get rid of that. But they also want to attach, you can only be racist if you have power and privilege as a race, which means only white people. But if you actually understand that you can't define somebody's um, character, you can't define who they are morally as a person by their race, because that would be racism, while also attaching that to the original definition, it's a complete contradiction. You can't have in the definition the idea that it is true and false at the same time. It can't be a false idea that you are, are attaching a moral evaluation of their character to something that they have no control over while also attaching a moral evaluation. It just, it doesn't work. It's, it, can't, it can't be true. It can't be, you know, up and down at the same time. So, the reason that they're not going to talk about the original definition, they're not going to try and change that, is because they need it to be a negative word. And it only stays negative because it is true. It is true that you can't judge someone like that. It's not proper. And then you'll also hear a lot about systemic racism. It's systemic because everybody is doing it. Well, not everybody, but every white person is doing it, whether they think they are or not. It's not uh, something that you're judging on an individual basis. It's systemic. It's very, you know, magical. It's mystical. It's out there. They're not pointing directly at it. Very few people will actually point to a specific law or, uh, you know, regulation code statute that is racist in its application, although there are. Uh, groups, organizations that do things to that effect, but generally the topic isn't about those specific instances. It's not racism that you can actually deal with. It's systemic. It's just out there somewhere. So you have to challenge 
the idea that racism includes power and privilege. You have to be able to keep asking why because you would follow down that path and it would be a complete contradiction. Whether or not you want to argue that point depends on the situation. Most people are not going to be able to do that. They want to use the word as a kind of moral guilt hammer to beat you over the head with, not to argue over. So this is confusing a lot of people because as soon as the word comes out, they're just, they can't handle it. They can't argue it. There's nothing you can do or say. Of course, we've seen recently the companies, a lot of um, you know, large companies are coming out supporting uh, BLM, Black Lives Matter. Uh, and they're doing that as a, honestly, they are doing it as a smart um, business move because you have the side of uh, BLM, generally the left, who are going to support BLM. They're going to say Black Lives Matter, you know, all the, uh, what is it, Instagram um, black screens. If you don't support it, if you don't um, signal and say that you support it, if you don't say anything, then that automatically puts you in the camp of the racist. So the businesses have to decide, do I say whatever I need to say to not draw the attention of the left? Or do I say nothing? Or do I support the right? Well, if you're going to do nothing, then you get put in the camp of racism because you're not supporting Black Lives Matter. If you come out against Black Lives Matter, then you're going to be called a racist. And if you support Black Lives Matter, then they'll say, okay, you're good. You might still be a racist, but at least you're atoning for your sins while everybody on the you know, right, you know, the right, aren't going to do anything. So the smart business move would be to say whatever you need to say and move on because the right isn't going to attack you, the left will, so you end up siding with them. Not that that's necessarily the right thing to do, but it is, I give them, you know, some leeway there. I don't hate them if they say Black Lives Matter because they're just going to say it. They're just going to put it on their Instagram. They're going to say what they need to say. Similar to all the people who are virtue signaling, they're going to pretend that they support Black Lives Matter. They're going to say what they need to say and then move on with their lives. They're not going to actually do anything. Coffee and milk. Anyways, I just wanted to clear up the definitions and the words being used because a lot of people aren't really challenging them. They're just letting it be said and kind of accepting it. They're not really saying anything against it. And granted, a lot of people can't because if you do, you'll be outed as a racist. You can lose your job, uh, you know, angry Twitter mob. Uh, so a lot of people are choosing to say nothing. And we've gotten to the point where you can't say nothing because if you say nothing, you're a racist. So we're getting closer to the point of uh, no return, if you will. And all the people who are trying to take a backseat to politics and not do anything, thinking that they can just sit on the sidelines. Well, there are no sidelines. There's, there's no sidelines in politics. You're all under, we are all under the legal system and we have to deal with the legal consequences. So hopefully you can agree with me, thumbs, comments, say what you need to say, support the people that you think are right, and hopefully we can change things. I think that's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, I haven't said everything I could say about racism or the ideas that people hold or where they lead, the logical implications in the directions we are going. But if you have any more questions about the definitions or what they mean or 
who the real racists are. And just to clarify, just to get, you know come out with it, the people who are defining you by your skin color are racists, whoever they are. If you try to define someone's character by their race, you are racist. It's that simple. It doesn't get any more complicated than that. And there's reverse racism, anti-racism, but you can't reverse the idea like that. It's like saying two plus two equals four, and that's true. And then the wrong answer would be two plus two equals five. The reverse of two plus two equals five would be negative five. So racism being the wrong answer is not combated by reversing a wrong answer. You just reject the answer completely. You can't reverse a wrong idea and make it right. You can't just play the other side of the coin. You can't just say racism is true, but not because white people are superior. It's actually black people are superior. You can't just reverse it. The idea itself is completely false. You have to reject it completely. And BLM and the left, they, they don't reject the idea. They agree that everything is about race, that your race defines you. It's very, very important and you'll see it everywhere. It's always about race. The constant is race. It's all about black lives and it's white people, it's groups. So that is the main focus of Black Lives Matter. It's the main focus of the left. It's all about groups. It's all about your race. It's all about, you know, male, female. It's all about the things that are not relevant to your character. So I think I'll end that there. I don't want this to go too long. I'll probably have more to say in the future. All right, thanks for listening.